there are two what I call positive commands and two negative commands for every believer, for everyone that's indwelt by the Spirit of God. Let's talk about the positive commands, the believer's responsibility. Number one is to be controlled by the Spirit. The Spirit lives within us, but that is entirely different than Him controlling us. That's where we come in. Are we still going to try to control our own lives and try to live the Christian life in our own strength? Or are we going to submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit and allow Him to control us? The scripture is very clear in Ephesians 5.18. Here's the command. Be ever filled with the Spirit. Don't be drunk with wine but be filled with the Spirit. When you're drunk with wine, you're under the control, under the influence of the wine. You walk differently, you talk differently, you think differently, because wine is in control of you. And I've seen that with my father and other alcoholics. They get under the control of wine or alcoholic beverages, and they act in unnatural ways. Now, he says, be, don't be filled with wine, don't be controlled by wine, but be controlled by the Spirit. Now, that's not a suggestion. That's a command. And in the Greek language, the original language, it's an imperative verb in the present tense, which simply means when you have an imperative, it has the force of a military command. It's not a suggestion. Well, I'll think about it. It's a command to be obeyed. And it's very strong in the original language. And it's in the present tense, which means continually be obeying this command, not a once and for all thing. He says, be continually controlled by the Holy Spirit. And what does that mean? Well, it means, number one, it's not optional, it's obligatory, and it's one person controlling another person. And sometimes when we say be filled with the Spirit, people interpret that to mean the Spirit is like a substance and like He pours into you and you might be half full of the Holy Spirit or three quarters, three quarters filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I've heard people say, I'm filled with the Spirit, but I leak. It's like the Holy Spirit is a substance. The Holy Spirit is not a substance. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's the third member of the Trinity. So it's one person wanting to control another person. And he wants to continually be in control of our lives. You say, how does that happen? There's not a neat formula. Some people have tried to make it a formula. I've, I've searched the scriptures uh, on this. There's not a formula. The closest thing I've found to it is what Jesus says in John chapter 7, verse 37 and 39. A very unusual statement. It's not a neat, concise formula, but listen to the words of Jesus. Jesus stands up on the last day of the feast and he shouts, which Jesus normally didn't do. And Jesus says this, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and let him drink. Out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And he says, by this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not been glorified. But once Jesus was glorified, ascended back to his Father, the Holy Spirit descended, and the Holy Spirit then indwelt the believers, and he was there now to fill the believers. So he says, Jesus, speaking prophetically, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to Jesus and believe in him, as the scripture has said, streams of living water are going to flow from him. But by this he meant the Spirit, the Spirit that was going to be within, the Spirit that was going to indwell, he was going to flow through them. He was going to be in control of them. Now the Spirit who indwells can't be control, can't not be in control of something that he can't have. 
He won't force it on us. He's there. He'll never leave you. He's indwelt by you. But he wants you to respond to him and give him control of your life. I like to look at it this way. We must admit our need. Lord, I can't live the Christian life. I can't do all the things that we've been talking about in my own strength. I admit that I am weak, that I'm frail, I have good intentions, but I falter. I need your empowerment. Admit. And then I submit to his control. I, Holy Spirit, I am yours. I want you to control me today. I want you to control my thoughts, my words, my actions, my life. I want you to be, some people have pictured it, on the throne of my life. I voluntarily give you the control and I ask you to take possession of my body and to manifest the life of Jesus through my flesh today. So you admit your need, you submit to his control, then you commit to follow him, commit to follow his lead. And as uh, someone has written in, in the uh, book, The Expulsive Power of a New Affection. I like that title, The Expulsive Power of a New Affection. When I have come to know the Holy Spirit, he works within me and he expels those things from my life that are contrary to Christ-like living. He's in charge. This is the way the man expresses it. He said, it's not a matter of dealing with all and every sin before you can be filled. Don't have to do that. It is not a matter of repulsion of sin, but it's a matter of divine expulsion. Sounds a little complicated, maybe. Let me give it again. It's not a matter of dealing with every sin before you can be filled. Some people teach that. I've got to take off every sin. I've got to get rid of every sin in my life and then ask the Holy Spirit to fill me. Some people say you have to confess, you have to go through everything. No. The picture here is that I ask the Spirit to control me. He works from within me and he expels those sins from my life when I give him the control. It's not me trying to pull off this sin and stop that behavior and not do this and not do that. It's him flowing through me. And as he flows through me, he pushes those things away from me. A beautiful picture, I think. So as a believer, when you accepted Christ, you come to him just as you were, right? With all your sin, with all your baggage, you came to Jesus that way. We need to come to the Holy Spirit in the same way. Weak, frail, needy, I come to you. I submit myself to you. I want you to do your transforming work in me from the inside out. It's a process again. But the more that I learn to allow the Holy Spirit to control me, consciously give the control of my life to him, the more that I do that, the more like Christ I become. I am being transformed by the Spirit of God into the likeness of Jesus as I allow him to control. So that's number one. Be controlled by the Spirit. Take that command seriously. Ask yourself, have you ever admitted your need for the Holy Spirit's control? Have you ever submitted your life totally to the Spirit of God? I am yours. Take control. My body belongs to you. You indwell me. Take over. And then commit yourself to following his promptings, his leadings throughout the day. That's number one. That's critical. And take that command in Ephesians 5.18 seriously. That command is in a very interesting context. You have to read the whole fifth chapter and the sixth chapter to get the immediate context. But right after he gives that command, he talks about relationships. He talks about husbands loving your wife as Christ loved the church. How can a man do that in his own strength? As Christ loved the church? No. Wives, submit to your husbands. How do you do that? The Holy Spirit enables children, 
obey your parents. Employees, submit to your employer. All of that, to do it consistently in a godly way, is not natural for most of us. We can grit our teeth and try, but if the Spirit is in control in our life, those things will happen. So it affects all of our relationships. Be filled with the Spirit. Ask yourself, am I filled with the Spirit? I've asked people that. People are hesitant to say that they are or not. And you have to ask yourself, if I'm not filled with the Spirit, why not? That's our first responsibility. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the Kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com. Once I have assurance, the best of my knowledge, that I have obeyed the command, the next command is in uh, Galatians 5.16. A critical verse for living the Christian life and for empowering the changed heart. Galatians 5, 6. But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you'll certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh, human nature without God. Walk in the Spirit. To put it even more simply, I read out of the Amplified New Testament. But to put it more simply, in the New American Standard Version, the NIV, other translations, it simply says, walk in the Spirit and you will not gratify the lust of the flesh. You can go to counseling all day long for a bad behavior. And you can read book after book on how to do it, how to, how, to, how to live victoriously. But if we would only follow this command, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. When do I fulfill the desires of the flesh? When I'm not walking in the Spirit. I'm not walking in the Spirit when I'm not controlled by the Spirit. And you th begin to think about walk in the Spirit. What does that mean? I like to say, how, how do you walk? The only way I know to walk is one step at a time, right? I walk. And walking in the Spirit, you're saying yes to the Spirit of God, no to self. Yes to the Spirit, no to self. And I come to those choices every, every day, many times a day, and you do too. Am I going to walk in the Spirit or am I going to walk in the flesh? Am I going to continually allow the Holy Spirit to be in control of me by saying yes to Him and no to the flesh? Walk in the Spirit. Keep in step with the Spirit. That's the key to living what's called the victorious Christian life. Remaining sensitive to the Spirit, responsive to the Spirit. And that, that's staying in that close contact. And we'll talk in, in a moment the things that work against that. But get the concept in mind. Be controlled by the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. And that is something that we need to constantly review, repudiating the flesh, saying no, and saying yes to the Spirit, responding to Him. We do the walking, He does the leading. That is the first the two fairly simple positive commands, right? So I would encourage you again to ask yourself, number one, am I indwelt by the Spirit? Have I been born again by the Spirit of the living God? If so, you are indwelt by the Spirit. You don't need to beg for Him. You don't need to ask Him. He's there. The third member of the Trinity lives within your body. Your body has now, as a child of the living God, become the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he has made you part of the 
family of God, the worldwide family of God. He's baptized you there. He has sealed you, which means he's guaranteed you that you'll arrive at your eternal destination. I know that. So once I have that assurance, then why wouldn't I want to control him? I still have the choice. Even though he's there, I can still control my own life. I can run my, my own show, so to speak. Or I can say, no, I want you to control me. And now I want to walk. I want to be sensitive, responsive to you, Holy Spirit. And that will transform your life. Most people, I would say the majority of Christians, don't really understand the work of the Holy Spirit. They understand God the Father, God the Son, but the Holy Spirit is kind of mysterious out here. But he is a person. He is a person. And he's a person that wants to control you. And he wants you to become like Jesus. That's his work. And he will do it. If you admit your need for him, if you submit yourself to him, and if you commit yourself to living a spirit-filled life.